All right, so I'm starting this recording for Adirondacks as well as for our European viewing audience. Um, getting ready to start the high voltage ultrasonic cavitation experiment again. Uh, I'm going to change camera angles here. Okay, so that looks like about the best possible angle for everything. Um, to recap, move this out of the way. This is a microwave oven transformer that has been uh, salvaged, obviously, out of a microwave. It produces approximately, no, it produces exactly 2400 volts AC on the high voltage output terminal with 120 volts in for a 20 to 1 um, voltage ratio. And the peak voltage when rectified becomes 3600 volts at the filter capacitor which is uh, also from the microwave oven transformer. It is rated at 10,000 volts DC. It is 0.74 microfarads in capacitance. So <clears throat> if I turn this up I get about 135 volts at full at full output. In fact we can um, measure that now without actually powering up the system beforehand so that we can get a rough idea of what our DC voltage will be. So at maximum I get a step up and my step up voltage is 137 volts AC. So if I take my 20 to 1 ratio and say 137 volts AC times 20, let's try that again, 137 times 20 equals 2740 volts AC times 1.414 is 3875 volts DC. So I should be able to get close to 4000 volts DC across these plates. Whereas the last time with my high voltage flyback transformer, um, I'm pretty sure that it was being dragged down to close to zero. Maybe, maybe a couple hundred volts, but certainly not what you need to create the electrostatic tension in the water to electrolyze under the presence of also the uh, ultrasonic waves. So <clears throat> I've got uh, Acadia steam distilled water that I'll be putting into the smaller jar. like 
that. And I'll be putting just regular tap water into the main tub of the ultrasonic cleaner. And it looks like I need to provide AC power to my camera or it's <laughs> it's not going to cooperate. Okay. We now have AC power. It will not shut off again. Now I'm just going to tip the jar to the side to release the air that's been trapped underneath it. And there we go. I'm actually fairly excited to try this. This is uh, this is kind of fun. So I'll attach my positive lead. that side and negative lead that side and this ladies and gentlemen is the test so I will turn the ultrasonic cleaner on and then I will ramp the voltage up. Ultrasonic cleaner is on and up goes the voltage. We should be close to 2000 volts right there. I'm seeing a lot of motion on the surface of the water here in between those plates. Are you seeing that? I've got electrostatic tension on the on the uh, water and I'm seeing a lot of waves. I've got close to 4,000 volts now on these plates. That is really fascinating. I'm going to turn the voltage down and the turbulence goes away. Turning the voltage up and I'm going to tell you what it looks like it looks like quite frankly it looks like the capillary action that you see in a very thin tube with the water as the edge of the water beads up to uh, both sides of the glass that's what it looks like to be quite frank here and there is some 
There is some gas, believe it or not, evolving off of the plates. And I'm going to tell you, there was enough current being drawn there that uh, it's making my Variac heat up. There was a considerable amount of current being drawn when I did that. Now that's just without, that's the water turbulence that I'm getting with just high voltage and, and no ultrasonic. And it's also quite warm. I don't know if you can see this along the edge of the glass right here. There's condensation from steam from the heat buildup of the water. Now keep in mind, this is distilled water that I have in here. You have to introduce a contaminant that conducts a very small amount. I would bet that those waves, if studied, moved at 60 hertz. You know what, you're probably right because this is a very small amount of filter capacitance. You're probably right. That would not be surprising at all. What is surprising is the amount of um, is the amount of heating that I'm getting, which tells me that there is conductivity, and I don't need to add an electrolyte as a contaminant to, to increase the conductivity. There already is conductivity. That's what that says to me. The fact that the water is warming up tells me Let's see, I don't want degrees centigrade, I want Fahrenheit. Yeah, look at that. hundred and thirty seven degrees there's some juice going through there So we're not going to concern ourselves now with the Variac because it looks like I'm going to burn up my Variac. It's only good for 6 amps. 
So let's uh, let's go with something a little beefier. There's a just a switch box that I made up. So I can safely turn this uh, assembly on and off now using this. This is not the result I wanted, but the, I, I, I still think that there might be some significance to what we're seeing here. I want to give you a different angle. There's an extreme close-up of the plate. Watch what happens when I apply 4,000 volts. Water is literally being pumped between the plates. Now I'm willing to bet the gas that we're seeing <laughs> is probably just boiling. I have a feeling this is not HHO. Because look at the condensation on the glass. It's 192 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost boiling. It is very close to boiling right now. There it goes. It's boiling. Hello? Okay, bye. Alright, that was the dinner bell. We're going to revisit this later after dinner. But, uh, <laughs> what we have here is a water boiler. Very interesting water boiler, but a water boiler nonetheless.
I will test the uh, the flammability of this gas, however, uh, after after dinner. So I will be back. I'm going to stop the recording here and return you to the elevator music from the elevator that you've never ridden before. So we're back again. I'm going to conclude this test here with some critical measurements. I'm going to start with a temperature measurement of the water. We're starting at 87 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit on the water. And one of the things that I want to see what happens when this comes to a boil is um, whether or not this boiling gas is explosive, and I don't think it will be. And the uh, other thing is I want to see what happens once it comes to a boil, what happens when I turn the ultrasonic cleaner on, because we know that tiny hydrogen bubbles in solution tend to coalesce into larger bubbles and clear the water of the fog-like appearance when you turn the ultrasonics on. So, there's my, uh, there's my little flame here, my little torch. All right, I'll be using that to test the flammability of the gas. Again, like I said, I don't think it's going to Uh, ignite, but we'll see. All right, so here we go. Voltage is on. Water is agitated, flowing, if you will. And it really is flowing. I wish I had some some particles in in the water. There is actually a convection current. I wonder maybe if the convection current is vertical between the plates because we're heating the water so quickly. That's probably what it is, but the 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 capillary action that occurs next to the plates when when they are highly energized this way is very very interesting. hundred and fifty degrees already between the plates hundred and sixty now we're starting to get some steam Some bubble action, we got 183 degrees, 192. We'll be at a full boil in just a moment. And I can report that this gas most definitely is not combustible. And the ultrasonic had a brief, brief impact on the uh, on the bubble action, but no, I'm sorry, this myth is busted. Really interesting what happens though.
it is bubbling it, it is coming to a, a boil in solution between the plates it's not really boiling off the surface of the plates it's boiling right in right in solution right in the middle So, looks like we got a great coffee heater. Yep. That's what we got. This myth is busted. <laughs>